John Fung and John Suat had very different personalities. And it was good to live with different teachers that way, so you began to see which aspects of a good teacher were constant across the board and which aspects were purely personal. One of the similarities which I've noticed across the board with all the great teachers is that they have a good sense of humor, and particularly the ability to laugh at themselves. So this is something you want to keep in mind as you practice. Are you able to laugh at yourself? The ability to laugh at yourself implies some distance. The ability to step back and look at yourself. From an outside perspective. The Greeks have a saying. They say it's the gods who laugh. In other words, lots of stories from a human perspective are pretty tragic. But the gods sitting up in Olympus being detached, standing outside the stories, are able to laugh. Now, the, the gods' laughter can be pretty cruel. But the ability to laugh at yourself is something else. It's a sign of understanding, a sign of humility. So if we're going to look someplace in the Pali Canon for it, which of the Buddha's teachings it comes under, it comes under teachings on respect. You have the ability to respect something higher than yourself, and are willing to look at yourself in the light of that teaching, that perspective, that's your respect. That's what pulls you out of yourself and gives you perspective. So it's not a, a minor thing, this ability to laugh at yourself. It's essential to the practice, because if you can't step back and look at yourself in this way, step out of yourself this way, that you're never going to get the proper perspective. You'll never be able to gain insight. When it's making it. John Fung's biography. It turned out that most of the stories I had of, that he had told about his experiences out on Dudong, out in the forest, some of them were stories about how he had overcome problems, but they're also the stories he told about stupid mistakes he had made. One he liked to tell was of a time he went to a, a mountain up in Chiang Mai, and there was a little monastery at the foot of the mountain, and up on, halfway up the mountain was a cave. And some of the caves in Thailand, all those many centuries of meditating monks, have been fitted out so that monks can live there even during the rainy season. During the rainy season you're supposed to live in a place that has a door that open, can, can open and close. And so some of the caves have little rooms that have been fitted with doors like that. So we went to that mound. He wanted to meditate in the cave. Well, he went up to the cave that afternoon, went into the little side room that had its door, opened the door, and there was this enormous snake in the room. Huge. I mean, big as his leg. Big around as his leg. He thought, well, maybe I won't meditate here today. I won't stay here tonight. So he closed the door, went back down to the monastery. That night, as he was meditating, he had a vision. Some Davis came and said to him, that wasn't a real snake, we were just testing it. That was it, story of a test that he had failed, it was a test that most of us would have failed too. But still, it's important that he liked to tell the story. Even in John Mahabua. He tells a story of, I never heard this from a John Fung, I heard it later from other people who had been with a John Mahabua. 
One time, John Mahabu went to visit a John Lee, who was staying in Junburi at the time. And that night, after the the group sit the Dharma talk, he sought out a John Fuang and asked him, about, "What about these other monks here? You know, who's who's the really good meditators around here?" And John Fuang cut him down with one sentence. He says, "I came here to meditate." Again, that's a story that doesn't put a John Mahabu in a good light, and it's a story he liked to tell. And I also think it's interesting that in all those years with a, with a John Fuang, he never told the story. These are just some examples of how the really great teachers can laugh at themselves and why it's an important part of the practice. This is what the teaching on not-self is all about, the ability to step back and look at these things that you identify with, these activities, the way you do things. And can see that from an outside perspective, that puts you in the position of the gods who can laugh. But because you're laughing at yourself, it's not cruel. It's a laughter of recognition. It's the laughter of learning. It's a laughter of growing intelligence, which is what the practice is all about in a lot of ways. So try to keep this perspective as you meditate. And look particularly at the areas where you think you've been doing something really smart, that you've got things all figured out, and try to back off and see what ways you haven't. Personally, some of my favorite stories are ones of people going from one culture into another and trying to figure out what's going on in the other culture, and using their ingenuity and being very clever, and then ending up being very wrong. Like the stories of the Laotian immigrants coming to America and being given places to stay, say in a city like Minneapolis, where it's awfully cold. And they look in their backyards and they see these wires strung out. And they put two and two together and figure out these are good places to hang fish to dry in the sun. Of course, you can imagine the reaction of the neighbors when the Laotians come out and instead of hanging out their clothes, they hang out fish to dry. I like that story. But also try to think of how many times you've been working here in your meditation, worked really hard to figure something out, and it seems to make sense, and then suddenly you realize how wrong you are. If you can laugh at that, you're on the right path. You've got what it takes. Because so much of the practice is gaining new perspectives. You can analyze humor and see a lot of times it's a matter of a paradigm shift, something that means one thing in one context, but you switch the context and it means something entirely different. And that's what we're doing here. We're doing paradigm shifts in the mind. In particular, paradigm shifts on what we identify with. You look at it in one way, these feelings, they're your feelings. Your perceptions are your perceptions. On down the line. And if you can suddenly shift around and see, no, they're not. They're the same things, same feelings, same perceptions, but you give them an entirely different context and they're entirely different things. That's the nature of a lot of insight. 
So it's not a casual thing, this business of having a sense of humor, of being able to laugh at yourselves. This is what gives you the right attitude in the practice, and it's this attitude that makes you able to stick with the practice. So that when you begin to realize how stupid you've been in certain things, it's not devastating, it's not horrible. You can laugh and you can learn.